Hey folks, and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 15th of March, 2021. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a, a bunch of different assets and, uh, and see if we can find something that's sitting up nicely for us. So we're using uh, our tools, just show you the configurations just so that everyone is on the, the same page. So we have risk reward is two, price and balance release period is two, uh, max accumulation distribution is set to five, and that's it. I haven't, everything else is, I think, left in the default configuration. And we're showing, of course, the consumed errors as well. And this is what I'm doing on, on all of the charts. And then here on the, on the histogram, we're showing the Let's see, we show, uh, okay, we have 200 mean periods. We have the mod modifier at 1.5 and that's it. Okay, so we're letting that run. I think this is the same for this one here. Yeah, it should be. It's gonna reset these just in case. Yeah, I'm. as you could see, there was, in this version of the software, there is uh, some settings that are different than yours. And this is the JSON. What I'm currently working on is as you all know, I'm building a new website. My brother-in-law is building a new website uh, for me, for Pitnotic. And what we're doing is we're gonna take all the signals from the histogram and we're gonna send them to pitnotic.com. And there's gonna be a dashboard there in the members section. And so all of the signals on a continuous basis from hopefully a boatload of assets will be showed in a beautiful, uh, maybe a table or some kind of a graphical representation so you can log in there and stay on that page and see the alerts all day long. And so you can get your trading signals directly from the dashboard, which would be really, really cool. And I'm going to, I'm building this one. This is going to be the first one. And the next one will be uh, the trading robot. So all of the orders taken by the trading robot will be sent to a dashboard. And this will be shown to us again graphically. And this would be good because we can see what the robot is buying, what it's selling, how much, and, and all the other information uh, relevant to the algo trader. But this will be done anonymously. There's not, no information about accounts or, or whose account it is. It's all sent anonymously, uh, securely, in JSON format to pipnotic.com and displayed in a really cool table. And maybe it'll be something like, maybe like a pie chart where we can see um, the different symbols and then each pie chart will have like a bigger piece if there are more British pound American dollar trades and there are uh, American dollar Swiss franc for example so it should be pretty cool I look forward to that uh, and then the final one will be the supply and demand software so all of these levels will be sent to uh, Pipnotic and shown in again in some kind of a dashboard that will show us um, this information no matter uh, the assets. So that'll be pretty cool. So then this information can be used not only by MT4 users, but also by people who are not using MT4, people who are using TradingView or Think or Swim or um, TradeStation or NinjaTrader or whatever. So that should be pretty, pretty awesome as well. So something to look forward to, but I'm hoping maybe to have that organized at least for the asset strength histogram within the next uh, few weeks. So that's the plan. Right, let's uh, start by running through a bunch of uh, different assets, uh, starting with the British pound American dollar. So let's have a quick look at the macro view, what's going on, we're moving higher. We've rejected off the tops here, we can't see what that is, so let's scroll back and see. Okay, here, so we did have a test up here. This is a nice area. Um, delete that one because this is where the supply is. We haven't quite reached the supply. We've got really close. So the 142.80, that's a lovely area. So I think that we could we could um, uh, entertain the idea of, of taking that trade. That's a, a pretty interesting um, uh, area just there. And the thing I like about that is that, I mean, price went up to it. It got close and it left. Oops. We go back. We, we had another attempt to reach it here. We didn't get very close and we rejected. And so looking back at the historical data, you can see that the beginning of the sell zone was here. And it just hit and it went to it pretty close a couple of times and then we tore through it. And so now the beginning of the sell zone is all the way up here. 
which is actually at that area of supply. So this would be a lovely area to entertain a short, should you feel so inclined. So that's something that I'll be watching out for. If we have a look at the the Euro American dollar, let's have a look here. So on this time frame, on the daily, we have we had this this area here. And this is an interesting area because it was respected historically. How price left, it came down and it left. And when price tested fed into this area of demand, we managed to remove these highs here and this area of supply. And this is supply because when price left here, it came back and poked into it and then it went down and removed this low, which is, so there's demand here, tested once, twice, this area of supply caused it to be removed. Okay, and now this one has been removed by what? By this pullback. Price went up, we pulled back, and then we went through. So this is a really important area. But now it's gone, as is this one. So these two are gone. And the only one that's remaining now is this one. And this one is an area because when price left here, we move through this one. And so this one is responsible for consuming this one. And notice that when you perform an analysis, you, you have to do that backwards, which is why the the setting that we have here, show consumed supply and demand is so important because you want to see which areas consumed other areas. And we, we can't really see that here because of um, because of the settings, but on this one here, Okay, here we can see some. Here we had one, it was tested once, twice, now it's gone. So we can expect price to react here. You go here on the four hour chart. Maybe we don't have it set here. It's on there. Oh, there it is. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so here we had this one here. It was tested. Now it's gone. What area did it? This one. This one went through it. Price came up to it and it left. And then we go back in time. We had this one here, beautiful area. Price came down, we rallied, we, we accumulated for one period, we, we popped up, and the beginning of this, the buy zone was the low of this pullback. Price came to it once, twice, and then we came down into this area of demand, and it went up. And this, notice as well that this area, this box just here, was on the chart when the second white candle, sorry, when this blue candle here closed, when this candle here closed, you were being told by the software that this would be a very nice trade in the future. And how did that work out? Very nicely. We had another one here. We had this one form here, just here. Price came down, we tested it, we came down, we tested it twice. And now, price went through it. The area that did it is this one here, which is a child. This is a parent. Parent, child, it came down through the child to the parent once more, once more. We had a few more up here where we had this one here, it was tested. This one removed it. We had this one here, which was tested. It went through, and this was the top. So we poked its supply over to the left, and now price has moved down. Okay, and so this one was tested once, twice. We had this one here, which was washed out very quickly. Uh, we had this one here, which is responsible for doing all sorts of, uh, consuming all sorts of opposing um, uh, liquidity. Um, price came up to it and then we left. We didn't even test it. So when price comes back up to this area here, beyond these highs, we can expect price to have um, a bit of a bounce, depending on what price looks like and depending what price reacts to or has reacted to down here at the bottom. Okay, so looking at this, we have a really interesting area uh, just here on the daily. And this is interesting to us because we removed this. We had the demand, sorry, just here, tested. This one sat on it, cut through it. So this is the one we trade. That's on the daily. And the reason I like to have this three chart configuration is because it enables me to, to see very clearly what is going on. And so you can see uh, uh, trade potentials on three different time frames at the same time. We also have the histogram here, which is telling us when we have um, advantageous uh, information relating to the end of cycles and trends. So you can see here that we have a negative mean, which means that a shorter term, we're probably going to move lower. We have the same thing here. You can see in the same, so this is positive here. So we're expecting that price will um, potentially 
um, come down to uh, towards the lows, the origins of these big moves, and then continue higher. So we've got that one there. Let's have a look at the American dollar, Canadian dollar. So what do we have here? So let's start from the top, then move back. Let's remove this one. This is from our first one. We can't see anything here. We had this one here. When price gapped up, we removed everything to the left. Price came to it. We removed it. We drew this. It was tested once, twice. We had this one here, which removed. When price left here, we managed to move above this high here, which tested this supply. So price left, consumed something over here. We tested it. We accumulated below. We removed it. And this is where price tested it. And so the software is telling you to buy here when this white candle right here closed. So months before price got here, you were being told that you should buy here. Price came to it, and then we moved to the other side of the, arc, the market to the op opposing supply, which is very beautiful. Then we have this one here. Uh, this is kind of counter trend, as you can see. You'll notice that when you have these areas in counter trend locations where we have lower lows, um, these are often the ones that are washed down. So you have to be very careful. But the reason that they're interesting to leave on the chart is because they show you where you had technical demand, price left, it was consumed, and then you can target the supply that moved through it. And so you find the strong move, the strong move before this was removed and you look at the white candles prior to the move so here we had the distribution we had the strong push which essentially resulted in this area of demand being removed and we had the we had the supply that did it here right there <clears throat> okay so it was tested once um, and then twice and then price came down then we had this one here which was which was removed and price came down to we can't see it on this time frame but I'm assuming that there was an area of maybe four hour probably one hour demand just here um, which we can't see on this time frame but we do have downward sloping trend lines as Carlos was talking about in the in the webinar today at FX Street that that a really good way to to gauge a trend is to focus on the the greater period trend lines which is a which is a very good idea okay so that's what we have there Rather, we don't really have anything on that time frame, but we do have a very clear decline in price. We have negative um, pushes lower, but we do have an increase in the strength of the American dollar relative to the Canadian dollar. So that's telling us to be a little bit careful because on, for example, the four hour, we're probably going to see, um, we're going to see, begin to see liquidity exploration, which we've talked about uh, quite a lot in the past. Um, and that is essentially where you have an agreement in price, and then you have uh, pushes lower. So price pushes lower. We're attracting sellers into the market. They sell, and so we have sellers in the market. You know where their stops are. And so this is essentially trying to flush the market uh, out of the liquidity, release liquidity into the market, and use this to build long positions. And so we're probably going to start seeing this on the four hour and the one hour. We're not seeing it just yet. Um, we can see that we have very negative uh, pushes here. Um, we have we had pr we had a cycle from here to the low. You can see we had the the flip here. We had the price moving up above the sell signal to the negative. So we had a cycle from here to here. Sell here, get out of the trade here. Price turned around, and now we're starting to we reacted at this area of demand a few times, and now it's gone. What area did it? Well, we've got something in here which is difficult to see. So let's go to the smaller time frame and have a look what that might look like. And notice that we have we have a lot around here. Just around here. And what's the area of supply that actually resulted in trading below this area? It's just here. So we have this right there. So you could box in both of those. So I just lost my slipper here. <clears throat> so you could you could box up both of those, and maybe give a bit of protection for your for your stop here, but also notice that we had we had an area here it was tested once, twice. This area removed it, so we have another area just just here as well. And the software found that for us. We have a couple of areas, so we have this one here, and we have the one just above here. So you could 
put your entry here and put your stop above here or try and go for a, a smaller trade with a smaller target potential entry and the stop just above the highs here um, okay so let's have a look at the Aussie American dollar we'll start on the big time frame um, okay so we are we're crawling higher let's have a look on the weekly yeah we're reaching these highs we spoke about this one here a long time ago prices poked into that we've showed some show some pretty interesting rejection um, did we find that one now the release is not strong enough on the weekly so it was not qualified but we had we had price move like this we had a, a test at the area and then price left and then we have on the daily chart price poked into that nicely and now price is looking to break down and we don't really have any opposing demand yet but we do you can see that something is in here and how do we know that we know that because when price came down to this area of demand and this is demand because when price left here we went above this high here and we removed this supply it's tested price came back this area was the origin of the move that moved it through price tested that area we went to the weekly area of supply that means careful buying because price will uh, eventually begin to feed into uh, something up here maybe have another stab at the weekly and then continue to move low this has been tested before and beyond that sorry uh, below this we don't really have any uh, any demand until lower the only demand that we have is here we've got this nice area it removed this we had a nice area beautiful I mean look at this trade the software told you to sell here uh, when this first white candle here closed and then all of this happened price came to it and then the bottom fell out that was probably a 30 to 1 or something and then price moved back up to that and this area removed it so this is the area that we consider to buy at just here okay um, looking on the looking on this one here we have uh, this area here but this is this is nothing the robot thinks so but this is just a, a reaction to that weekly supply okay so we had so we had this one here just to uh, to analyze this trade here we had this area of demand price left we removed this little area of supply which was tested a few times the origin of the move that removed it is here price tested it we went up this one here this area of supply removed this demand so this is where we would trade the price came into the area and then it left so a beautiful example there so that's what we have there let's have a look at the American dollar Japanese yen I'll just do the just the majors because then we're going to be on to 20 minutes and I don't want to go on forever so if you look at this let's go to the weekly what do we have what we have we have this it's like holding a holding the bottom we have this area supply this is supply because we had this just here it can move it a little bit higher that's right that's fine when price left here we moved through this which was tested we went through price tested it and then we went down and we removed it so the area that removed that is this one here which has been tested once twice so that's gone so it's not it's still there but that's where we're headed and notice that we have a lot of um, uh, micro demand sorry supply here and I call it micro because you can't see the details of it here you can just see price wriggling lower this is this is um, liquidity exploration prices advertising cheaper prices um, attempting to entice buyers which it's doing and then price rallies we move sideways and then we fly up north so we have actually an area of demand here this is a beautiful area because this completely cleared uh, cleared the road ahead of us and so we can expect price to maybe have a bit of a bounce down at this area just here okay so if we go like that and mark that off this is a pretty delicious area this is a very nice area because when we had this area here price went down we moved below these lows we tested it we we moved up to it we sat below it then we popped so this is a nice area the 105.37 is a really nice uh, buy potential just here
So that could be something that would be interesting there. That's on the weekly chart. So some time before price gets here. Let's have a look on the on the four hour. So on the four hour chart, what do we have? Well, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Let's have a look left. Yeah, there's nothing really there. Price is kind of already, it's already overextended. We're moving higher. So eventually wait for, for this chart to break down on the four hour and then start to sell supply that's consuming demand. And we have a little bit of something here. We have this price here, price went up here. When price came into this area, we moved above this high. So we want the supply that removes this. So now there's nothing to do. You wait and see, sorry, just wait for price to do something. Okay, we go to the hourly, yeah, kind of the same picture. Ah, we had this, we had this supply here, tested once, this area moved it, it's been tested already, so now it's gone, so nothing to do there. We have this one down here, tested almost, this one sat on it, and then it cut away, so we have something down here as well, but there's no, no demand in here, nothing to do. You could have a look at this one, but we're pretty high, so just be careful. We also have some pretty clear signals that we're we're running out of steam. Okay, so you might want to be a little bit careful uh, buying, unless you're buying quite a lot lower. All right, moving to the American dollar, Swiss franc. Actually, going back to this one. Ah, oh, you can see this here. Yeah, okay, because the shard is scrunched up where we had supply, tested, tested. We had, we had the, uh, the accumulation, then we popped up. So this could be an interesting area. This is the one that was a little bit scrunched up on the other one, the hourly entry that we talked about. It looks a little bit better on this time frame when it's not so flattened out. So that could be interesting. Okay, going back to the American dollar Swiss franc. Ooh, almost got filled there. Not quite. So we had we had this. So we had a lot of a lot of trading here. It's beautiful how price popped up. We poked in and we flew north. We removed this. We cut everything out here. This is a supply that removed this demand. Okay, price went up, tore everything out. We came and tested this continuation pattern. Then we came down to the origin, the demand. Done, done, done. We sat on it and this is the area that removed it. So this is where we're trading. So waiting for that to, to work out. Sorry, we're waiting for price to move up into this one. We haven't quite reached that yet. So this is the area that did it. So that's what we're waiting for. Price will get there at some stage. Um, we look on this time frame. What do we have? Well, we have, um, yeah, I mean, this is the, the trade that we would be uh, interested in. We do have, we don't really have anything up here uh, yet. We do have on this time frame. we have this, which is tested, tested. Now it's removed. The area that did it is this. So we could box off the whole area. We've got something like that. Yeah, so that should be, that could provide an interesting opportunity. We'll have to wait and see. This is where price cut away. Good, well, I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, drop them in the Discord channel. And uh, thanks for watching.